Hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Ilan Asbel. Um, if you haven't uh, seen me before or heard me before, I'm the CEO of Autochartist. I was one of the original founders. Uh, delighted again to um, give you today's presentation about setting market appropriate stop loss and uh, take profit levels, so market appropriate exit levels. Um, uh, before we get going, I've got to read you a disclaimer, so let's do that first. Uh, so, a trading financial products such as CFDs on margin carries a high degree of risk and is not suitable for all investors. Losses can exceed the initial investment. Please ensure you, are fully, you fully understand the risks and take appropriate care to manage your risk. Good, now that the lawyers are happy, um, interestingly enough, uh, this uh, today's presentation is in fact all about risk, okay? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so that's a very, very appropriate um, appropriate uh, disclaimer to read because hopefully coming out of today's presentation you'll learn a little bit about uh, setting uh, correct stop loss and take profit levels. Uh, so I'm assuming that everyone can hear me. Um, I'm getting no feedback saying they can't hear any audio so I'm sure everyone can can hear me just fine. Uh, so um, uh, just to let you know there seems to be a bit of confusion in previous webinars that uh, I am not here to to sell you anything or pitch you anything. The uh, the order charter suite of tools is uh, freely available to technical clients, right? So uh, this webinar is purely educational. There's no sales involved. You don't need to pay for this product. Uh, you get it uh, directly off the technical website. You go on to uh, trading. Um, you go on to the tools uh, menu on uh, the technical website. And uh, then you click on order chartist, and um, once you click on the order chartist button, you will get uh, some information about the order chartist uh, analysis suite. And if you scroll towards the bottom of the screen, you will get um, a, a download for an MT4 plugin, which is the component that I'm going to be using today. Um, I'll also be using the order chartist web application. So again, uh, no need to buy anything. Uh, or subscribe to anything. This this tool is freely available to you if you're a live account holder at at Ticmo. Okay. So in previous webinars, we've gone through the installation process, and um, once you've gone through the installation process of Water Chartist on your MetaTrader, uh, you will have a little expert advisor in the corner, and that is uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Again. Uh, don't worry, I know it's called an expert advisor, but it will not trade on your behalf, okay? So don't worry about that. It's very safe to drag and drop it onto your MetaTrader uh, chart. So what you do is you find a chart that you like, you take the order chart as, um, expert advisor, you drop it on, you push OK, and uh, there's no other configuration to be done unless there's some technical difficulties, but, um, uh, but other than that, you just drag and drop and you get the order chart is, uh, 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 market scanner available to you. And order charts will give you all the trading opportunities in the market based on the uh, market watch window that, that you have. But um, today's presentation is obviously not about uh, which trades uh, to take and how to find trades. Today we're talking about uh, 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 stop loss levels and take profit levels. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the first opportunity here that we've got listed, uh, Euro, Euro CAD, uh, auto chart says a head and shoulders, and doesn't really look like a head and shoulders uh, to me, uh, inverse head and shoulders to me, uh, possibly a little bit, uh, not really such a, such a good one. Let's see what this one here on USD CAD looks like. Let's give that a moment to come up. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Come on, USD CAD. There we go. Like I said, click on USD CAD. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks a little better for me. Uh, this is certainly something that I can. I look like I can trade. And so now the question is for this presentation. Let's say I want to trade this thing short, right? Let's actually go ahead and do that. Let's trade short USD CAD. Uh, we sell the market right now. Okay, so obviously order charters gives you this. Um, this expected uh, range where we think the price is going to, right, that target level. And the question now is where do we set our exit levels, 
Okay, let's move this little block out away. Over here, because those are the pattern details, uh, which we discussed in previous webinars. So now it's very interesting. Um, how would I trade this? Right, for the first thing I do is I always trade the information we have from the past. So we can see, interestingly enough, that um, I'm just drawing some lines on here, that this target level coincides with uh, some uh, previous, uh, interesting previous uh, levels in the market, right? So over here there was an interesting level. Mm, maybe there were two breakouts over here, seem to be support, uh, definitely support over here. So this is quite an interesting uh, level for me um, and uh, might be, uh, so it looks like the target region exactly correlates to this, uh, to this, level, um, to this level over here. Right, let's see what other levels we've got that are interesting in this uh, in the scenario. Um, so there is uh, this level over here. Again, we can see that uh, the price has consolidated over there, touched it a number of times over here. One could even argue a little bit over here. Uh, certainly on the very, very far left hand side, you can see there's quite a lot of um, uh, consolidation and uh, resistance at that level. So that also seems to be quite a significant uh, level um, at um, at that price over here, right? So so these are all uh, very very interesting interesting levels um, for us that we could look at, right? Um, as exit levels on the take profit side, right? So um, so now um, <clears throat> uh, we look at this, and it's certainly now one very important thing to remember is that we are currently naked in the market, right? Which means we have no stop losses and take profits. So we need to hurry up and actually set some stop losses and take profits um, uh, for, for, this, um, for this instrument, right? So um, um, uh, uh, let's do the take profit side right now, okay? So we've got a, a short position uh, uh, happening here. Are we going to set some, some take profit levels and, and see what that looks like? So the first things first is let's agree that this is potentially a, a good take profit level for us over here and set our take profit at one, uh, to, what is it, 124.59. We'll make it 124.60, which is what I like to do because that is um, uh, a nice round number, right? 124.60. Uh, we'll set that take profit level at that level over there and uh, Good, there we go, we can see we've set our take profit level over here. Okay, good. Um, and so now the question is on the stop loss, on the stop loss level. But I also wanna give you a kind of a, a little bit of a, of a hint about, uh, about something. Is that sometimes these kind of chart patterns make us see things that we wouldn't have seen uh, before, right? So, um, so uh, the first thing is obviously the current movement down to this level, but also it's made us see, notice this, this other very, very important uh, level over here, this one here at, uh, what was it, one, uh, 124, 150 at 124.15, right? Definitely a potential uh, level over here. So again, um, this might be interesting for us to watch um, if the price hits this, uh, hits our initial take profit, right? We might want to set another short position uh, down to 124.15, right? That could be another another thing for us to do. However, we're not going to do that right now. We're not going to. We're not trying to be greedy in this presentation. We're just trying to show where we would set stop losses and take profits. Okay, so now we're no longer naked in the market on our take profit side, uh, but we are definitely naked in the market on our stop loss side, which is uh, which is obviously the biggest uh, the biggest risk of all. Okay, so let's see what we, what would happen on the on the on the take profits on the stop loss side. So on the stop loss side, we need to be quite quite careful. So so we need to find some 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 levels of consolidation. Uh, this one here that I'm drawing right now for you is definitely one, and you can see that this is uh, there was area consolidation over here. I touched it again over here, uh, a little bit of consolidation on this side, and again there is another level. Uh, over here, which is the previous uh, major turning point, um, psychological turning point in, in the market. Let's actually squeeze this whole graph in uh, and we can see, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit too, or zoom out a little bit too, to get a little bit more history. And uh, interestingly enough, this last uh, turning point over here, interesting enough, correlates to quite a bit of consolidation in the past, right? Very interesting. So this is a very, very interesting uh, level for us. 
Um, similarly, we can see this um, level that we've got here, also quite a few consolidation points uh, in the past based on that level too. So again, two very, very interesting um, interesting levels that we're that we're looking at over here. And which one do we use as a you know as a, as a as a stop loss? Uh, let me zoom back in a little bit and show you what I would do um, to kind of try and rationalize this whole thing. Uh, let me just put my um, erase all my drawing objects for just a moment. Okay, here we go. So um, the way I rationalize it is as follows. Okay, so um, we're going to go into these uh, levels that Autotronics has drawn for us on the right-hand side. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but there are these blue lines that order charters draws in on the right hand side and I'll discuss them in more detail in just a moment but essentially what they're doing is order charters is telling us where we can expect the price to be within the next four hours right that's within this range here and the next 24 hours that's within that range over there right and this is what we call it order charters the expected trading range based on volatility Okay, so so this is this this expected trading range is not directional, right? It's not directional like the like the trading opportunities that Order Charles brings up. This thing tells us the expected price range movement for the next four hours and twenty-four hours. So if we had to, um, uh, uh, so the reason it does four hours and twenty-four hours is because we're currently on the four-hour chart, right? If we had to change our chart to a daily chart, right? Let's see what happens. We'd only get the daily uh, expected volatility range. And if we had to set our uh, chart down to a one hourly chart, then we would get the one hour volatility range, the four hour volatility range, and the 24 hour volatility range, right? So we'd always get the chart interval and higher. Right. So if we go back to the uh, four hourly chart, which is how we deduced our current uh, short trading opportunity, um, we see that the expected price range movement is for the next four hours is between 125.34 and 124.68. Right? And on the 24 hour at 124.53, it looks like to 124.49. Right? And so we can see immediately that on our take profit side, we have set our take profit um, uh, at uh, 124.60, which is kind of in the middle between the, 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 the four hourly and the 24 hourly trading range, which is in fact where we have our 125.37 uh, stop loss level. Right. So, so now you have a decision to make, right? And and the decision is: Do you have a um, a, a risk reward ratio of lower than one or greater than one? Now, some people say you should never trade to the risk reward ratio of less than one, which means you're risking more for the same uh, gain. Um, I know some very successful traders that do trade that way because sometimes when they make a win, it's really really big, but because uh, they follow the trend, for example. So. Um, However, I think for this for this presentation, let's keep things simple. And and um, because we're able to derive a take profit right at this level over here, we should look at taking the same amount of risk on the stop loss side. So let's, for this example, ignore that uh, stop loss level and actually set the stop loss level at this price over here, which is what what is that? Uh, oops, I've drawn over the line. It is uh, one twenty five thirty seven. So let's right click on this modify the order and set the stop loss at 125.37 and we'll modify that order and we should have that order set in place now. Okay, so now we have a full order set in the market, which is uh, we have an open position and we have a take profit and we have a stop loss. And now at this stage, I just wanna take a one moment's pause in that, um, you know, some people tell me, Ilan, I, I don't trade with stop losses and take profits because I, I watch the market all the time. Okay, I watch the market all the time. I keep my eye on it. Um, I, um, um, 
and and um, and so I'm able to take action uh, when I uh, when the market moves the other way or in my direction. Now, um, what if you have a power failure at home, or what if your hard drive crashes, um, or what if your monitor blows up or overheats? Or something like this, right? There could be a number of things. Your 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 baby, uh, your child could walk into your room and spill a cup of juice onto your laptop or your or your computer, and suddenly your computer switches off. Um, what are you going to do then? Uh, what are you going to do when you have nothing to control your trade with? So I always tell people that no matter what your trading strategy is, you should always have a a, a kind of a stop of last resort. Always have a stop loss level set in the market, even if it's way out of the market, right? So in this example, uh, let's say we set our, uh, we didn't want to set a stop loss, but we set our stop loss really, really high somewhere, so that in worst case scenario, right, like uh, uh, what they call force majeure in, 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 in legal terms happens, we're still safe and we can sleep easy at night. Right. So it's it's so a stop loss level is used not only to to actively manage your 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 trade, but also as a mechanism for a uh, really an act of God uh, and to manage your risk on a, on a uh, act of God. So please 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 keep that in mind. Even if you don't trade without with, if you trade without stop loss levels, always keep in mind at least put uh, a worst case scenario uh, stop loss level um, into your trade. Okay. Um, now we've placed this uh, this trade, and we can let this one uh, uh, let this one trade, and we don't have to worry about it because uh, we we obviously have uh, the stop loss and take profit set at the broker level, so we don't even have to have the chart open in order to in order to monitor it. Let's move on to this other uh, example over here, uh, the um, Euro uh, JPY example, uh, a rising wedge on Euro JPY. Uh, what happened to my order chart is there. Oh, there we go. Okay, my Euro JPY screen is changing. Okay, similar uh, setup to the previous one. So I'd rather not trade that right now. Let's actually trade something completely different. Um, let's try this uh, Euro uh, JPY four hourly example over here. Might give us a different um, a different kind of setup to trade. Yes, that certainly is a different uh, setup. This is a resistance level, right? So we traded a, an example of a rising wedge that was going down with a short breakout. And now we have a, an emerging uh, Euro JPY example. So in, we know it's emerging because there's a, a gray arrow and we can see quite clearly that this line uh, over here uh, this is the uh, resistance level, and we can see the price is moving towards that um, towards that uh, line, but has not yet broken through that line. And so, um, let's actually look at seeing how we're going to trade uh, this example. Okay. So first things first, uh, let's actually go ahead and place the order. And um, this it might not be the way you would do it. I would normally plan my trade uh, from the beginning to the end um, uh, before I place my order. But but let's actually just go ahead and, and place that order. Um, the market's moving against us slightly, but but nevertheless, anyway, this is this uh, presentation is not about making money. It's about um, uh, just showing the, the the concept of the stop losses and the take profits. So. Order chartist uh, immediately obviously gives us um, a uh, a potential uh, take profit level, which is this level over here where the resistance line is right at at uh, one thirty two seventy eight. Okay, um, but I am not sure whether I would set my take profit there. To be honest with you, because yes, there was a little bit of a a resistance level. It seems to be a major turning point, slightly higher up. Um, over there as well. Let's actually zoom out a little bit and see if we can get more information. So this is a this is a problem, right? This is I'm looking at this chart now. I'm thinking, well, this is a problem for me. Why is this a problem? Uh, maybe I rushed into this trade too quickly for this example. There's been nothing in the past uh, to show me anything of importance at these levels. That means we're testing levels 
that are really, uh, we're going to levels that are really untested uh, for Euro JPY, certainly within the past, uh, the recent history, um, which, is, which is a bit of a problem. And this is where we come into the situation where uh, I just jumped into that trade for this uh, presentation, but maybe should have thought about that a little bit more carefully. So we're in untested uh, territory, and so this is the only information we have uh, to go by. Um, so let's look at the at the other side. Let's look at the, the 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 stop loss side. We're in a long position. Let's look at the stop loss side. Certainly, the big stop loss over here we can see immediately is around this level. We can see that the price has tested that level um, over here, uh, over here, uh, over here, with a major breakout through this level here. Breakouts, big bars and candle breakouts are also very very important to me as indication of important psychological levels. So certainly. On this, in this trade, I'm looking at the stop loss level to guide me in terms of my risk and reward. So let's go ahead and set a stop loss level um, on this trade at um, at uh, one thirty four uh, ninety. Oh, uh, did I get that? Uh, did I get that wrong? Uh, at Oh, sorry, 131.90. <laughs> wow, that would, that would have been way out of the market. Uh, sorry, so 131.90, uh, and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to um, erase this drawing object so you can see the my stop loss level over here. Now that I've set my stop loss level, now my question is, what am I going to do on my take profit level? So now again, I look at the volatility tool, and I can see that... I expect the 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 price of uh, euro yen to trade with uh, kind of between the ranges of 132.14 and 132.97 um, for the for the next four hours and for the next 24 hours between 131.86 and 133.24, and so I'm getting an understanding of where I can expect the price movement to to be in the next few hours, right? So again, I look at where I set my stop loss. And um, and so I let that guide me in terms of my risk reward ratio. And so this level of 133.05 approximately uh, looks like a very interesting level for me because it will give me a very even a uh, risk reward ratio. Okay. So how about I go ahead and I modify that order uh, and I make my uh, my uh, take profit at 133.05 um, and I would edit that order. There we go. And so um, there is my uh, my full position uh, in the market. Okay, so so here I am in the market on two trades. And again, now that I'm I'm in the market, I don't have to watch these these ch uh, these these charts, right? Well, I can of course switch to them, but if I don't want to, I don't have to because uh, my order chart is, is showing me is screening all the, um, the 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 charts for me. Okay, so that was an interesting way of trading uh, this um, this um, Euro JPY example. But um, along with this, I want to show you another way I could have traded this. Okay, so the other way I could have traded this Euro JPY example would have been to wait for the breakout. Okay, so if my uh, 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 resistance level is is um, let me try and get that as accurate as I can. Let's say around one thirty two uh, seventy eight. What I could have done is I could have traded a pending order. I hope you all know how to do a pending order. I could have done a buy stop, right, which means trade when the price gets over that line, trade it, right? So I could have done a buy stop at what was it, 132, 132, uh, um, let's say 80, right? I would have given it a bit of time to break out. I could have done uh, that. Okay, so now notice what I did there. I've got a pending order at 132.80. Uh, um, uh, uh, so what would happen then is that I wouldn't be in the market immediately. I would have only been in the market if there was a breakout through this uh, resistance level. Okay, so that's the other way of trading these, what we call emerging patterns, right? Where the price has not yet broken through support or resistance, is we can trade these um, e emerging emerging patterns with either buy stops or, or sell stops. Okay, so um, I'm going to delete uh, this order for now uh, because we're not um, in this presentation to talk about uh, pending orders and, and how to trade that. We're more talking about um, the... Um, 
uh, uh, market appropriate um, exit levels. Okay, let's look at one or two more examples. So uh, let's switch to this GBP Swiss franc four hourly chart over here. Um, uh, very similar to previous turn, um, uh, previous setups. I won't go through that. Very similar channels is very similar to trading the the, the rising uh, or the falling wedges. So I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to go to a double bottom. See what that looks like. Okay, so this is um, uh, quite an interesting one, uh, this double bottom. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so what am I seeing over here on this, on this double bottom? So I am seeing, again, uh, an um, interesting level, uh, take profit level over here on the daily level, right? So daily meaning in the next 24 hours, although I'm not sure whether this is um, something I would set as a take profit, I might want to look at something around this level here because why is that because i see in the past consolidation here here and here at that level so i might want to kind of squeeze that in a bit and if we let that guide us on the risk reward um, then we might be looking at this level over here in terms of um, stop loss which is interesting actually in, in of itself, maybe a little bit lower over here because we can see this price um, uh, consolidating over here, over here, again over here, um, definitely over here and uh, over here and over here, right? So, so in this scenario, I might, this might be a trade where I would consider a, a risk reward ratio slightly lower than one um, uh, on on such a trade, right? So again, I can I can place this this trade. Um, I can go uh, long uh, in the market, and I can set my stop loss. I can do it all immediately now, right? One point zero nine eight one, and I can set my I take profit at one point one zero three six, and I can buy. And there we go. My entire position is is in the market, and um, and the, and and there we go. And I'm in the market now on three uh, different uh, trades. Now, now note this another thing that that we've just done over here, right? So what we've done is we've taken a position on uh, USD CAD. We've taken a position on Euro JPY. We've taken a position on um, Ord NZD. Notice how we have positions on lots of different uh, instruments. Certainly, um, this is a great way to trade uh, and not focus all your energies and all your capital on, simple, on simply one trade, right? You need to try and diversify your risk because as you know in the trading game, it's not about making 100% profit or even 80% profit. Professionals look at making 51 or 52% profit, right? So 51 or 52% of their trades, they want to be profitable, right? And so the idea is to spread your risk to, to make educated guesses about where the market is going based on your technical analysis or you know whatever it happens uh, to be. We use uh, support and resistance at order charters, um, set uh, market appropriate stop loss and take profit levels and obviously then uh, hopefully uh, maybe you make a loss on one and a profit on two of them or, or you know um, hopefully your, your win to loss ratio will be uh, higher. Right, okay, so we've got some, 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 uh, some um, uh, entries into the market. What I want to do right now is, is, is leave my uh, MetaTrader open for just a, a little bit and let it run. But what I want to do now is I want to open the AutoCharlis web application to show you uh, an interesting piece of information. So if you want to open the AutoCharlis web application, you would um, click on this little um, world icon. You would copy this URL uh, from this, um, uh, from this uh, uh, application, and then you would open up uh, your web browser, uh, paste the um, that URL into the uh, toolbar at the top, and you will get the AutoCharts web app. Now, what I want to focus on here in this presentation, obviously, is the volatility analysis, which is where you get those levels that I showed you in MetaTrader, right? We actually call it the trumpet. So here it is, the trumpet. So this is an example of the expected volatility range for EURUSD. 
Uh, my, I'm set to America Chicago, so that's 7.30 America Chicago. So from 7.30 America Chicago, uh, um, we expect your USD to trade between uh, 117.60 and 118.22, looks like for the next four hours. Um, uh, etc. for the next uh, uh, 24 hours and 117.76 uh, uh, between 117.76 and 118.05 uh, for the next hour, right? So this is the same information that we got in the in the MetaTrader, right? Those those blue uh, those blue levels that 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 I showed you uh, earlier. But there's another piece of information I want to show you, which isn't available in MetaTrader and only available in the web application. And that is this um, price volatility range per hour of day. So what this shows us here is for every hour of the day, what is the expected price range movement for that instrument? So, right, so this is the expected price range movement of EURUSD for every hour of the day. And you can see, well, again, I'm based in Chicago time zone, this might be different for you, that I expect an increase in volatility from around 1 a.m. at Chicago time all the way through to about uh, uh, 10, 10 a.m. Uh, uh, Chicago time. And why is that? That is because this is the European session. And as most currency traders know, the center of the currency trading world is not uh, uh, New York. It is, in fact, London. That is where all the clearing happens. Um, that is where all the uh, market activity, the volatility, and the liquidity happens. It's in the, during the London hours. So this is why you will notice how we, we expect, let's say, at the opening of London, uh, over 20 uh, pips of movement uh, for EURUSD during the first hour of the London Open. When New York opens for the first three hours, we see massive volatility, right? Up to sometimes up to 34, 35 pips. Uh, um, in in um, in uh, in the first hour, right? So the question is, um, I see a lot of traders. They are told by educators such, such as me uh, to set stop losses, right? But then they're trading. Let's say, for example, the opening of New York, and they choose a ten pip stop loss on euro dollar because they're only willing, unless they have a standard account and they're willing to lose $10 a pip and they're only willing to lose $100 on their trade so they decide on their, the fact they're going to use a 10 pip stop loss. But a 10 pip stop loss on euro dollar um, is going to last you about five minutes during the New York Open. You are simply going to get knocked out because of noise and that is just a really terrible thing to happen. If you if you could, if you're only willing to lose a hundred dollars on a standard account, and that's one pip uh, or one pip for every ten dollars, then you shouldn't be trading. Uh, you can you you shouldn't be, and you shouldn't be trading with a stop loss of ten pips. What you should do is you should actually trade. Uh, you should adjust your trading size, right? So if you only want to lose, uh, uh, let's say a hundred dollars, but you want to set um, a, a, a much larger stop loss, then only open a, a 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3 uh, 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 a lot position on on uh, on your on your graph. Okay, so so let's actually look at that as in. Well, let me. I'll switch to MetaTrader in just a second. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so so as you can see, there's lots of volatility during the during the London hours, and then obviously as the, uh, the 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 U.S. hours goes on, the volatility decreases dramatically. When the U.S. closes, uh, we have a very very low uh, volatility during the uh, during the uh, Asian session, and that's when you can use much tighter stop losses, right? So this um, uh, volatility analysis section um, in the order charts web app is very important for you. To, to try and plan how you're going to be trading, right? So let me quickly switch to my uh, Euro USD graph. Um, I'm going to just erase all my drawings and I'm going to quickly open a Euro USD graph. I see we're in profit on one of our trades and uh, almost even on another one and down on one of the others. Okay, anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's just say I want to trade uh, Euro. Um, Euro USD, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close this um, um, the order charters because I'm talking about stop loss levels now, right? Okay, so I expect uh, Euro USD to trade um, uh, uh, in the region of kind of 
uh, 35, 40 pips in the first um, hour of, of the day, right, of, of New York, okay? So um, let's look at what, um, uh, what, that, what that looks like, right? So from a current price level of uh, 117.84, 117.94, uh, 118.05, let me try and find that. There we go. So somewhere that's about about 20 pips up, and uh, I'll kind of take a guess of 20 pips down. Right. That's where we expect the price to be in the next uh, in the next hour or so. Okay. So the thing is this: let's just say you're using some other kind of uh, technique, right? And you want to uh, set, let's say, a long position on on euro dollar, right? And you want to set your stop loss at this level, but you let's say you're going to go long. Let me draw that in. Let's say you want to go long, right? And this is where you want to set your stop loss level, right? So what, what does that look like, right? So what does that look like? So I'm, I'm going to bring up my calculator, right? So the current price is 1.1790. And our uh, take prof, uh, our stop loss that we've kind of drawn on our screen is 1.1790. Seven one should be about twenty pips. All right, so I, I guessed it right. Around twenty pips. Right, the market's moving a little bit, but twenty pips at a standard uh, uh, account that's ten dollars, but that's two hundred dollars. Right, that I could be risking. So, what is the way for me to only risk a hundred dollars with the stop loss? And the answer is that what you should be doing is you should be trading. Instead of one lot volume, you'll trade 0 0.5 lots in volume, right? Because then you'll only lose, uh, well, <laughs> you won't lose, but yes, you will only, if it goes against, you'll only lose uh, 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 $5 uh, for every pip instead of uh, $10 for every pip, right? So the way to trade correctly is not to adjust your uh, stop loss closer because you can't afford to lose that kind of money. What you should be focusing on doing is adjusting your position size, right? And so this is why uh, this order chart's volatility analysis is very important for you because um, even if you don't use the order chart's indicator, right, or the expert advisor on your chart, you can still um, look at this volatility analysis per hour of day uh, graph, and you can understand where you expect the price to be and how much you expect it to trade before you set your uh, your position size, right? And then so so set your exit level according to your strategy, the same way we did with all our graphs, right? Remember, I set it according to turning points and 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 uh, and and price levels. That's my style of trading. You could be trading moving average stop losses or or parabolic SARs as stop losses. The point is, is though, wherever you set your stop loss, once you set, once you have planned your trade, then work out what the put value is for what you're trading. If you don't know how to work out the put value, um, you know you can just use a, about between eight and ten dollars for 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 a put, and then you you make sure you take the appropriate position size. Okay. Uh, so that is very very important, and I urge you to do that uh, um, all the time uh, with your with your trading. All right, um, uh, and so with that, I kind of want to conclude, but I want to see if there's any questions that have come up. Um, uh, so there is um, um uh, well, I'm not quite sure how to uh, pronounce that name. Uh, um, uh, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that name. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, yes, um, different brokers uh, use different data feeds. So, obviously, your order charts information will be very different uh, um, depending on uh, which MetaTrader platform uh, you use. Um, so, obviously, today we're talking about uh, about Ticmo, um, and they have quite a variety of different instruments to trade. Uh, and so. Um, uh, I'm not sure why you'd be uh, trading with with anybody else, but certainly uh, talking about other brokers is off the off the table during this uh, during this webinar. Um, so I wonder if I could uh, field some questions um, around uh, um, around what we spoke about today. I'll give uh, I'll give everyone just a moment to think of questions. Um, okay, normally when there's no questions. Um, 
it means I gave the most brilliant, uh, the most brilliant presentation ever. Uh -huh. I see, a, I see a, a question coming through from um, Sibonello. Uh, Sibonello asks, sorry to take you back. Please help with filtering the order charts indicators. You showed it last week. How do I set that up? <laughs> okay, I'll quickly recap on that. Again, just to let you know that this is my trading style. Uh, you can find your own trading style. What I do is I do the following. I'll just wait for that a moment to come up. I click on this little filter button over here. Oh, come on, order chartist, load. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. Not quite sure why that's okay. There we go. So my filter button came up. What I do is I only trade. Um, uh, uh, let me circle that for you actually, so that I can. Uh, everyone can see. I trade completed chart patterns, and I trade trade breakout and approaching uh, key levels. And I uh, only trade the higher time frames. Okay, uh, that gives me a reasonable set of results that I can uh, that I can trade. Also, the, all the results that I am seeing here have um, their correlating um, uh, performance statistics. Right. So, so if you click on this little world icon. And you click on, uh, you copy and paste this performance stats uh, URL into your uh, browser. Then you will get uh, performance statistics for those um, different types of of, um, of uh, 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 trade setups that I showed you there, right? And the complete the breakout, uh, the breakout chart patterns, and the breakout and approaching key levels. Okay, um, and and the, that one uh, approaching key level um, that I showed you earlier has one of the highest statistics uh, probability of of success based on past performance. Um, so that was, I think it was this uh, Euro JPY example. I wonder if we were making money on that. Yeah, that is the one we we're making good money on. <laughs> that in fact has the highest probability of 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 success. Um, uh, Euro JPY. Let me quickly bring that chart up again. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Uh, so that's that example that then I traded over here, right? I traded that long. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so again, I hope I uh, have answered uh, your question from last week about how to filter. Okay. Well, that being said, it doesn't look like there's any more questions coming through. I hope you've enjoyed today's webinars. Uh, if I have to leave you with one rule, it is um, always look at historical value, historical prices to see where are the significant levels of where to set your stop losses, take profits. Secondly, make sure you take into account your expected volatility. And third, never adjust your stop loss to manage your risk. Set your stop loss where your trading strategy tells you to set your stop loss. But the way to manage risk is by changing your position size. Okay, remember that. Okay, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening or your day, wherever you are in the world. Bye.